Good morning, everyone. Welcome back here at the ECMIT TV studio in the Bella Center here in Copenhagen, Denmark. My name is Judith Cohen. I'm your ECMIT TV host. And it's time for me to um, introduce my next guest. It's with great pleasure that we have yet another keynote lecturer of this year's ECMIT. Uh, live here with us in the studio to tell us a little bit more about the topic that is being discussed um, during the keynote lecture. So um, next to me is Professor Tom Harrison, Professor of Infectious Diseases and Medicine in St. George's Hospital in the UK, London. Mm. Yeah. Uh, welcome, uh, Professor Harrison. Good morning. Great yeah. to have you here. Um, uh, if I'm com uh, informed correctly, yesterday was already your keynote lecture on... Um, Uh, cryptococcal meningitis. Um, That's right. yeah. How was it? How how did you experience giving this lecture, and how do you feel that the audience experienced yeah. it? Um, yeah, well, I enjoyed the opportunity, obviously, to present um, a program of work that's been going on really for for 10 to 20 years, so uh, in front of a large audience. So. Um, Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you, you just, just mentioned 20 years of yeah. research because the, the, the name of the lecture was A Revolution in the Management yeah. of Cryptococcal yeah. Meningitis. Can you give us a little insight in how, how did it start 20 years ago? How did you get involved yes. in yes. um, this yes. Well, disease? cryptococcal meningitis, just to, just to explain, is a, is, a, is a major complication of HIV infection. Yeah. It's one of the major reasons in which pa 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 patients with HIV die, is yeah. essentially. And uh, it's been a huge problem. Um, and not solved entirely by the fact that we now have treatment for HIV infection, antiretroviral treatment. Despite that, there's still many thousands of, 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 of patients in Africa uh, suffering, so, you know, falling ill with cryptococcal meningitis. And the treatments, historically, have not been very effective and especially they haven't been very available in Africa and they've been too toxic to give in Africa. So yeah. that, that's really, uh, and it's been a tragedy that patients are dying of this meningitis because if they do survive, if we do uh, develop better treatments, then they can go on to the antiretroviral therapy and lead long, long uh, mm. lives, you know, yeah. so, so just that's to get the, the problem context, we've been uh, trying to just address. Just to get the context right, is uh, yeah. how, how, how many uh, occurrences of cryptococcal yeah. meningitis are there in, in uh, the higher yeah. income countries oh, um, well, amongst the HIV in, in, patients? In higher income countries, because of antiretroviral treatment, the number of cases has decreased. It still occurs. And it also occurs, incidentally, in other immunosuppressed patients, so not just in HIV Uh, yeah. infected patients. In some parts of the world it's more common than others. In the United States actually there are more cases than some other parts and also in the Far East there is cryptococcus in yeah. non-HIV populations. But yeah. uh, the, bulk, the, burden, the bulk of the global burden is in HIV yeah. and it's in Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, South America. Yeah. 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 So that's, how, that's probably the reason why you also expanded some of the research towards Uh, um, uh, countries who are more uh, resource deprived, I, uh, I imagine. Uh, absolutely, that's where that's where the burden of disease is, and that's where the need was for better treatments and, yeah. and treatments that were suitable, were feasible to deliver in the in yeah. those settings. Yeah. So, so how did that evolve the the, the research? Because you've yeah. been looking towards better treatments, different yeah. treatments, uh, yeah. maybe different modes of action. Yeah. Yeah. Could you yeah. Uh, could you elucidate well, a bit? Um, um, Just to try to explain a little bit then, essentially there are three drugs that are active. There's uh, fluconazole, flucytosine, and amphotericin uh, B uh, treatment. So our program was trying to look at the best combination of those drugs and the least toxic combination of those drugs. So we built a series of um, initially smaller phase two studies uh, where, where we looked at different combinations and different dosages. And we, we developed a technique whereby we could look at how quickly the drug combination cleared the infection from the cerebral spinal fluid. You, you okay. understand patients with meningitis, they have the infection yeah. in, the, in the spinal fluid that surrounds yeah. the brain. So when you do a lumbar puncture test to diagnose it, you can also take some of the fluid and see how many organisms there are, how many fungal cells per yeah. mil of the CSF. And we use that to measure the, the rate of clearance of infection on a particular dosage and combination of drugs. Does it also have like a predictive value? Can you also predict response? Um, the patient, surely patients who have a very high 
load of organisms when they first come to hospital have a have a poorer prognosis. Yeah, yeah. but it was also, as I, as I say, a very useful marker. So we yeah. could do we could do studies in you know patient maybe thirty patients per group and get an idea of which was the best dose and the best combination. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what made a revolution? What, what, le- what was the biggest change? Yes. It took a little time, but I mean, I think it's fair to say that the end result is a revolution because um, the situation um, 20 years ago in Africa was that the most effective treatment, amphotericin B and flucytosine, was, was just not available. And it yeah. was too toxic to yeah. give safely in, in most African hospitals. Yeah. And what the treatment they did have was called fluconazole. Yep. Very good, very safe treatment, but not strong enough treatment for the initial, for the initial therapy. So, um, uh, but, but using combinations, we've managed to cut back on the amount of amphotericin. We just give one very large dose of a liposomal form of amphotericin B okay. now, which is much less toxic, yep. really very few mm-hmm. side effects. We combine it with flu- high-dose fluconazole. We've yep. gone up on the dose of fluconazole yep. three times. You can do that safely. Yeah, we've shown that it's safe safely. just for a short period, yep. just for yep. two weeks. And the third drug, the flucytosine. And using yep. that combination, it's highly effective, also very safe, and also practical to give because there's only the one intravenous infusion and the yep. other treatments are tablets. Yep. So, so, so it's that's sort of the, the ideal combination. But what, um, yeah. Is it also the ideal combination for, um, uh, or the preference treatment combination um, in, in countries l- like in Europe? Yes, now that, that's, a good, that's, an excellent, mo- that's an excellent question. And that, you know, we've been asked that many times since these results were published uh, uh, last year. Yep. I, I mean, there's no reason. I mean, our, our answer to that, and we have written about it, and the uh, uh, interested uh, viewers can, can look at uh, the articles we've written, So there's no reason to suppose this should not be a very effective and and safe treatment also in in high-income country settings. But but the results of the trial, the trial was designed for Africa and the comparison was the the standard of care in Africa, not the current standard of care in Europe and North America. So it's fair to say you shouldn't just directly uh, interpret the results because no, uh, potentially but, but, the, the, the but study population yeah, is yeah, different yeah, but also. But I think it is yeah. an option for yeah. higher income country settings. There's yeah. no reason that this, it, it's, not a le- it's not a lesser treatment, as it were. No. In fact, it's a combination of three drugs. So yeah. it's a triple therapy yeah. combination. Yeah. Yeah. And um, um, concerning the, because um, I assume that uh, the study showed that it was there was efficacy, that there was a favorable yeah. um, uh, safety profile. Um, can you say anything about the the prevalence? Has it changed, uh, or the the, um, yeah. the duration of disease, or um, a yeah. morbid, morbidity or mortality yeah. outcomes? Well, um, we can we can say, we can say that progress is making in in kind of in the real world setting. The, the trial that preceded, what I've, the regimen I've been describing is from the Ambition trial. Prior to that, we'd done a, 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 an early, slightly earlier phase three trial called ACTA, uh, which was kind of a, a halfway step to, to the Ambition. And on the basis of that, the treatments were changed in, in some settings in Africa. And we do have real life data that the mortality uh, took a step change down well, in, yeah. in routine care. Yeah. So um, the prevalence, the, the incidence of this disease is a more, you know, that's a longer term uh, challenge. Yeah. And um, although we're reducing the mortality of patients coming to hospital with meningitis, there are still, there are still patients coming. And so an, another part of my talk was to talk about a, a screening and prevention strategy yeah. that was also been working on with colleagues over, over these years. So we're trying to actually move the move the dial as it were and intervene earlier so yeah. and that and that and that we hope in the long term will actually reduce the number of cases of meningitis occurring wow yeah yeah, yeah so you so you speak of a, a revolution and i understood uh, from you just chatting with you earlier yeah. that the who also revised revised their guidelines yes. accordingly to your study yeah. findings um yeah. Already in 2018, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We we for both trials, we shared the results confidentially uh, after the trial was closed, of course, but before yeah. the the delay that is inevitable in in terms of the publication. So 
We shared confidentially the results so that WHO could go through their processes uh, and review the results uh, carefully, but then they were ready to come out on both occasions with revised guidelines almost immediately after the yeah. results were published, which obviously it's all about uh, saving time and getting better treatments yeah. uh, in action. Yeah. And it's an evidence of how yeah. strong the data yeah. was. Um, yeah. 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 So um, you, you already touched on a bit uh, on, on the next step. So you're going to move it a little bit more from management of disease to prevention yes. and early yeah. detection. Yeah. Um, uh, are, there, are there any other further uh, study plans? Uh, yes. Yeah. Waiting? We're still, still, still plenty to do, of course. And I mean, yeah. the, current, the current trials that are ongoing, um, I would say, first off, are in that screening and preventative strategy. It's, yeah. an it's a compelling strategy to intervene earlier, but I don't think we've, um, uh, we haven't quite optimized it yet. Uh, so we can screen patients before they get sick with a blood test and find evidence of this cryptococcal infection. There's an antigen from the cryptococcus organism you can detect before yeah. patients get sick. But then uh, may, maybe um, patients with late stage HIV who are at risk, maybe 5% might test positive and then you treat those. But I think we, we, we still need to find the best treatment for those CRAG positive patients, we call yeah. them. So there are two ongoing trials actually looking at more effective antifungal therapy for those earlier stage patients. So they're both in progress. So that's a very important work that's ongoing uh, right now. Yeah. Um, th there are many other things. I mean, I think the three drugs I've talked about, I, I think we've just about uh, you know, come to the end of the road of optimizing how to deliver those. So now it's a question of if there were new drugs on the horizon or if there were ways of manipulating the immune system in a specific way for particular patients you know, to, to help them to help them recover uh, quicker. And yeah. um, it's interesting because in the, in the medical mycology field, fighting fungal infections, there are actually a number of new drugs uh, coming out. Yeah. So um, uh, one or two of those we'd be very keen to explore in the context of cryptococcal meningitis. Yeah. yeah. But is it, do I understand correctly that you're saying that the need for new therapeutic options is somewhat a little bit more to the background because now the focus lies more on uh, well, uh, diagnostics, well, uh, screening, prevention. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think we, we've made very significant progress in the treatment with the current therapies. Now we want to intervene earlier through the prevention uh, strategy. Uh, so I think that's our focus, yeah. yeah. If a new drug comes along, we'll always be looking to explore it. And yeah. um, we still have, in the, in the ambition trial, you know, still, you know, this is a, a bad disease. There's still 20 to 25 percent mortality. So some of that could be um, addressed by earlier intervention. Yeah. Some of it is not due to cryptococcus itself because these are patients with severe immunosuppression with HIV. So they're also um, susceptible to all the other complications of late stage HIV. So that particular patient population will never be able to reduce the mortality to zero, but we're still wanting to reduce it further. Of course, of yeah. course. So enough to do still, yeah. but major steps have been yeah. uh, taken yeah. already. Yeah. It's wonderful to hear. Well, thank you yeah. so much for um, elucidating this okay. uh, for our viewers uh, some more. And thank yeah. you for taking the effort to come here okay. and, and do so. No thank problem. you so much. My pleasure. If you want to look back at the keynote lecture Professor Tom Harrison gave, um, look it up. It was uh, held yesterday on uh, April 16th at 11 o'clock in Hall A. So uh, once this comes on demand on the online platform of ECMED, you can still watch this interesting keynote lecture. We will take a small break and we will be back here with ECMA TV at the clock of 11 when we will be inviting um, the president-elect of the Trainee Association of ECMID um, and some of the outstanding TAE awardees. So please come and watch us then. See you at, at 11. <laughs>